Congratulations to those junior players, a tremendous effort, and we'll have more competitions later on in the soccer show for it, sure. It was terrific, Paul, it wasn't to see the interest from the ankle biters as well, because they're the future of the game, and, uh, and good luck to them. It was a great competition. Thanks for the response. We say that sincerely, don't we, Voice of we Authority? Do. That 0055 number generates a bit of extra cash for the soccer show too, which is not a bad thing. Absolutely, cash is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of society we live in. <laughs> Paulie? Okay. What's more happening around Victoria? State League Division 1 results, of course. The uh, championship is well and truly over there, but the top two sides played each other this weekend in the second last round of the league, and that was Bentley Greens, a one-all draw with the Thomastown Devils. A fitting end to the season, but of course, Bentley Greens, champions there, 55 points. They can't be caught with uh, just one round remaining. Down the bottom, though, Knox City almost certain to go down, and possibly Frankston Pines with a game in hand can escape the drop down to State League Division 2. Looking at the goal scorers in State League 1, a great battle here. At the top, Peter Petrakis of Clorinda has now joined Chris Andriotis from Bentley Greens on 20 goals with one round remaining. Zoran Todorovsky from Westgate, a goal behind, still a chance to catch those two at the top. Quickly looking now at State League Division 2 at the league ladders. Springvale White Eagles on 59 points. John Kennedy's team there, congratulations to them. They have won the championship. Moravan City and Essendon Brunswick Royals fighting out second spot still. And down the bottom, Clifton Hill are relegated and Altona City are in big trouble. Shocker, you've got to State League Division 3. State League Division 3, the mighty Westvale have won that uh, championship there and uh, so has the reserves. The reserves won the championship too. South Dandenong have come second with Melbourne City on third and going down it will be Sandingham and Sunbury United. And in State League Division 4, Paul, South Spring Vale, Cranbourn and Geelong are still fighting out to see who's going to win that league. And uh, going down is Brighton because they got thrown out, Blakey. Do you have anything to do with that? No. Uh, Dufton and South Montana, they might go down as well. See, folks, you can be taught. It feels like I'm reading donations, doesn't it? Over you, Blakey. I've, I've got a couple here. Provisional one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shocker. <laughs> Moreland City, 64 points. They are romping it in in Provisional one. It's the head of Layla. And uh, down the bottom there, Brandon Park and Dandenong. Stiff cheese for those two, they're in big trouble. And uh, then in provisional two, Keysborough and Mornington, neck and neck, hello. And uh, at the top of the ladder, just ahead of North Glenroy, down the bottom, the students from Monash University in all sorts of bother. Schwabby. Third division, third division where it's all happening. Division three, Metro on top, Endeavour United, 51 points. Templestowe Eagles on 41. And on the bottom, Ringwood Rovers, 17. And Carrum United, eight. In uh, North West, Division 3, Whittlesea United on top with 47, Darabin United 44, and on the bottom West Preston and Upfield both on 13, and uh, finally in South East Central Division 3, Juan Turner on top with uh, 48 points and three teams on 37, North Caulfield, Endeavour Hills and Ivanhoe United, and on the bottom East Q on 15 and RMIT on 10. So it took four people, young Williams, to wrap up the Victorian division. So it gives us some idea of the magnitude of Victorian soccer, doesn't it? Four, four heads, Swabby and Soccer and myself and you, Polly Williams. We've got uh, still some more coming up because we're going to talk about, uh, of course, the grand final next weekend. And uh, bloody hell, if you're not excited about this one, I'll knock your heads together. It'll be a blockbuster. I can't wait. Blockbuster, Blakey. Beauty. What about you, Paulie? You can have a word too. Oh, thanks, mate. I'm looking forward to the game next week, of course, and uh, Altona Magic with the extra week rest. And uh, they've got a couple of injuries. John Markowski with a hamstring, of course. Well, he could still be playing. I mean, he's had two weeks off, hasn't he? So. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. The rest will uh, probably see him in the starting lineup. Now, who's he going to leave out? That's the big well, question. Well, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Because I know some of the boys down at Altona Magic were saying just this. Uh, you know, do you. Do we have to change a winning lineup? They played without Jonesy in uh, in their uh, finals matches, and uh, all of a sudden you get to the grand final. Now, no, I know he's an audaciously talented. They're not going to leave him out of the grand final. Come yeah. on, I think no, they're not going to leave him. I think they should leave him out. I mean, what does he contribute to their, their profits this year, as, as far as winning? I mean, he's only played what three games? Maybe, well, maybe two know, games. In the grand final, you know, he, he could score a hat trick. I, no, think, uh, I don't think you. I mean, if he does, that big Liberati from Berlin will just put him in his back pocket and I'll Oh, the game. meeting of the sides of meat. Two slabs of meat at the butcher shop. Liberati and Markovsky, they've uh, got a fair bit of weight behind them, haven't they? 
Yeah, well, Big it'll boys. Be, it'll be a clash, yeah, but I mean, I think, you know, Swabby's making too much uh, emphasis on John Markowski. You take, you, I think you're in the Altona Magic camp. I think you're trying to throw the emphasis on that they're looking for Markowski. If he doesn't play, that'll give Bellina a false sense of security and Altona Magic got up. But I'll tell you what, Swabby, I know you're from the western suburbs. Uh, and it shows. You, you definitely <laughs> will not get away with this one. Berlin Lions and the my big mate Peter Ollerton, they will win the grand final. Three o'clock, Olympic Park on Sunday. This Sunday coming, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a cracker. I'll you tell know? you, four <laughs> clear winners in the Altona <laughs> side. Four clear winners. Tom Markovsky at the back, they're not going to beat him. Valkovsky's going to dominate the midfield with Emshovsky. And Atanasovsky, like he scored the, the winning goal last time. And uh, he's going to be a constant danger to them down that left-hand side. So those four match winners... And uh, Bulleen's going to have a problem because they've got Gribats and they've got Lutkins who aren't mobile enough and uh, they're going to find that very difficult to cope with. And a big loss for them too, Frank Valentich is Valentich also missing is not going to be playing. Week. And he's a cornerstone but of that defence. Just quickly, Shwabi, before I, before I forget, because I'm prone to do that sometimes, I have a, a few problems up here every now and then. Don't forget, good folks, at home. one and a half hours next week, that's 90 minutes in your time, Shwabi. Uh, the soccer show, the big grand final special, it'll be all happening, we'll be wrapping up the grand final, all the highlights of the day, Paul, and it, it's, a, it's pretty exciting, isn't it? It's good to uh, do a game at Olympic Park as well, that gives the atmosphere. Oh yes, uh, Olympic it's Park. It's a big game, mm, big so game. if you're going to go to one of the normal venues to watch the match, don't bother, it's at Olympic Park. Three o'clock uh, kickoff, three and kick -off. Uh, all the action on the 90 minute edition of the soccer show next week. You mentioned Peter Ollett and um, uh, Chris Shocker, and uh, of course he's heading for his fourth consecutive uh, championship as a coach, mm. if you can get him up next week. No side has done it from the elimination final. Ian Dobson, uh, you would testify, has been terrific for Altona Magic. Gentlemen, <laughs> will it be a battle of the coaches? It certainly will. It's, it'll be a tactical battle all the way. I think, uh, I think excuse me, Laurie, I think. Ian Dobson's tactics are too tactical. He doesn't give the players freedom. I mean, I think Altona Magic are the most mechanical side in the league and they play set plans. I haven't seen an entertaining um, game. You oh, know, come on, you. Well, 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 tremendously well, entertaining I mean, they, player. They, they are like, Altona Magic are like robots. I mean, and that's the way Dobson coaches his teams and good luck to him, he gets results. But uh, Peter Alton gives the players a bit of head and he gives them flair and the Berlin flair will beat the Altona Magic stare. I think it's right. important that the coach gives his players a bit of head. And you said the show will be 90 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> you said the show will be 90 minutes next week. Not if John Fraser's uh, timing us. Couldn't help Listen, it. I was just sitting there. Bulleen <laughs> plays <laughs> a tight <laughs> defensive game. Going. They don't give anything away. So where do you get off calling uh, Altona Gate uh, robotic? Well, Swabby, we've always hated each other, right? Yeah, the well, thing okay. Is, the, thing is, the thing is, you go for Altona Magic. <laughs> But you, the, you can't pick a flaw in Berlin Lions because they came from behind. I'm not behind picking any, any, any flaw Five in the team. Five minutes ago, you were saying John Markovs is going to be the saviour of the great... What, yeah. isn't the team good enough to do it on their own? Listen, a good player can never be left out, and John Markovsky's a great player. He's not fit. Right, you, okay, you're talking about dong. You know, you're talking about Altona Magic being robotic. I think was the term you're talking about how well, yeah, and and Bulleen and how well organised they are. And we've certainly seen in this final series that they can both stop other sides. Altona Magic did it against uh, Port Melbourne. Bulleen did it against uh, Port Melbourne as well. Is that going to perhaps leave us with a with a grand final bereft of? Too much nil, nil. Well, I'm, asking, I'm posing the question. They, neither be, side wants to lose. It's going to be a tight, tense game, just like today, or yesterday's rather match, I believe. There'll be no chances taken. It'll be a cautious game. You know, I don't think it's going to be a three-all draw or a two-all draw. I think goals will be hard to come by. Well, I mean, especially with uh, Jeff Oliver and goal, of course. I mean, Jeff Oliver's had a terrific uh, final series. He's had a terrific uh, season. And uh, he's going to be the man that uh, Altona has to beat. All right, we're going to. John Markovsky can beat him. And we're going to go over to John Murray on this. But you beat Gentlemen. Take the park. Ding, ding. Time's up on the soccer show, unfortunately. Let's wrap it up. But before we do that, these will be the selections for the grand final. We'll go around the panel, shall we? Compliments, of course, of our sponsors, Soccer Australia. Good on them. Bless their souls. And, of course, the Bayswater Indoor Soccer Centre. We thank them for their support. And, uh, Schwabby, your final word Altona Magic. Uh, shocker, no well, surprises. Berlin, the mechanical Peter uh, Ollerton, the mechanic, he'll undo the bolts on that uh, Altona Magic machine. And you'll be uh, down Easy. there. You'll be down there with I. I will. I'll I go I. for uh, Berlin one 0 Pulling through from the elimination final, the cutthroat road to the grand final. Altona Magic finished second on the ladder. They were in there first. Clash of the Titans next week in Olympic Park. By golly gosh, if you're not there, you're more foolish than I am, and that's saying something. 
Flaky with the soccer show. We'll be back next week. My selection, Balloon Lines. See ya.